Welcome to the Kill Count, where we tally up the victims in all our favorite horror media. I'm James A. Janice, and today we're looking at the first season of Crypt TV's Mordeo, which had one episode released in 2017 and four more in 2019. The Mordeo is a riff on the Algonquin folk forest monster, the Wendigo, and the series was made by my pals over at Crypt TV, who sponsored this video and who recently released a supercut of Mordeo Season 1. You can watch that 17-minute supercut by clicking the little bubble in the corner up there. What began as a simple tale of a hungry guy lost in the woods has since expanded to become part of the larger Crypt TV monster universe. And as could be expected from Crypt, that expansion included a whole lot of bloodshed. How many kills will this showcase of cannibalism deliver to us? Let's find out and get to them. The series begins with a kill. Yep, this Daniel Stern looking dude is dead and being eaten by a guy who I can only assume was his friend at one point. So sad when a friendship ends in cannibalism. After the people eater notices he's not alone in the woods, his victim comes back from the dead to taunt him with an unexpectedly velvety voice. Oh, you've done it now. There's a price to pay for eating flesh in these woods. You belong to the Mordio now. What the fuck does that mean? Oh shit, it means a total monster makeover! The antlers might not have been fatal on their own, but when this dude's flesh starts splitting open, yeah, I'ma put him on the kill count. Even if it's more of a transformation than a death, since now he's a skull-headed Mordeo. At least this guy in his human form was kinda killed, right? I think it counts. Oh well, back to Nom Noms. The 2019 episodes start with some fingers getting cleaved, courtesy of this guy called The Butcher, who looks like he didn't quite finish getting dressed that morning. A woman named Linda hides behind a nearby tree and watches as this masked mutilator consults his cannibal cookbook. But the dude hears an ancient howl and runs off to genuflect at the Church of the Mordeo, leaving Linda behind to tend to her seven-fingered partner, Dan. The butcher consults his Bible-slash-map book and realizes that he's close. The ritual site is just past the Misty Mountains. When he gets to the bone-filled site, he sees the Mordeo watching him in the woods, and after trying some finger food, he begs to join the club. Please. Please make me one of you. But this club is too fancy for long johns and overalls, so the Mordeo shows the dude how you really eat fingers before killing him with a simple neck snap. Oh shit. Waste not one, not Mordeo. You'd better eat all that good flesh. There are starving cryptids all over the world. The butcher's blood splashes onto a news story about some missing Mohawk scouts. But talk about false advertising. There ain't even a Fauxhawk among the lot of them. The Mohawk that these scouts are from is the same Mohawk from Crypt TV's Mohawk, the three-episode series featuring a chain-happy, vengeful spirit named Estelle. I was really hoping to see a troop of Girl Scouts running around with Mr. T and Seamus hairstyles, but what are you gonna do? These three scouts are completely freaking lost. And in the case of Lady Rushmore back there, pretty freaking injured too. But after hearing a scream, they run off towards it, maybe hoping to get their merit badge and murder prevention. Instead, they find more of that bone art and a big old book, which ends up being the Crypt Cyclopedia, aka the Crypt Tome, aka the tattoo flash art binder used by Roger from Sunny Family Calls. With their compass broken, the scouts start to fight, and self-appointed leader Jen storms away from this chick who just looks like she should be named Lucy, but is actually named Named Nancy. Nancy watches as Angela, the third Mohawkless scout, is killed when her throat gets ripped out by a hand with long fingernails. And I thought these girls were supposed to have survival skills. Splurdy splurdy. Jen comes back and, thinking Nancy killed Angela, gets into a fight that ends with Nancy biting at Jen's fingers and Jen dying after her head is smashed against a rock. Ah, and she was only two merit badges away from retirement. Nancy gets a visit from the Mordeo because, judging by the rapid dilation of her pupils there, I guess she's joined the club. Up. Wait, that finger bite counted as eating flesh? Really? That little nibble? Come on now, who among us doesn't nibble on a little flesh every now and then? Linda and Dan, the couple that survived the overalls attacker, find their way to a cabin where Linda wraps up Dan's mangled hand. His convalescence is interrupted by a knock at the door from someone who Linda sees standing on the stoop. It's a girl. Better hope she's not asking if Tamara's home. But there are no doll faces here, only Nancy, who Linda lets inside and recognizes as one of those scouts missing a mohawk. Or missing Mohawk Scouts. Hey, by the way, what troop do you belong to, little girl? I belong to the Mordeo now. Oh, I, I was Pack 1381. Nancy falls to the ground and starts her transformation into a beast. And since I set the precedent right at the start of this video, this too will count as a kill. It is a little messy, though. I could use a second opinion. What do you think, Dan? I think... I think... 
No, well, I think you're dead, motherfucker! Because even though Linda is able to get the beast off of Dan with a fire poker stab, Dan dies from the bite wound that tore open his neck. And it's a clean kill, too. No messy transformation stuff. Linda stumbles upon a very useful Candyland map in that giant book of Crypt. So after tooling and psyching herself up, let's get the fuck out of these woods. She stumbles through the woods while a contingent of Mordeo monsters stand by in the background. Linda gets chased by the Nancy Mordeo, who looks like it's on its way to a dinner date. But after she hears that ancient howl reverberate through the trees again, that fancy little monster is gone. And in its place is the Mordeo Queen, who is loud and proud. <laughs> Linda ends up stabbing the queen in the face and running away from her, thankfully finding her way to a road where she flags down a truck. But she'll get no help from the truck driver, who looks like he plays piano at a honky-tonk bar, because it turns out he's joined the club too. You belong to the Mordeo now. And the honky-tonk man is right, cause here's her highness now. Although we don't see a kill happen on screen, I'll count Linda as dead because of this aggressive head grab. It's usually not a good sign. The season ends with a mid credit scene that sees a handsome young hitchhiker come across the crypto. Judging by his wrist tattoo, it looks like Mordeo about to get served sunny side up. How many bodies did the Mordeo leave strewn about in the woods? Let's find out and get to the numbers, right after I have some of this delicious beef jerky. That doesn't taste like beef. <laughs> finish the video, okay? Get out of here. And that's it. Mordeo Season 1 is available to watch on Crypt TV on YouTube and Facebook. And in case you're not already, make sure you subscribe to them for more high-quality horror shorts. Until next time, I'm James A. Janice. This has been The Kill Count. Leave it to the back of your shirt, and then it just needs to kind of come up. Oh, I see. When you grab him, kind of grab him from right oh here, God. and then move your hand up a little bit. Let's start that, yeah, like you said, once you see the blood. Yeah, let's try that. So is that rolling? Yep. Okay, and then like... Oh my god! Oh yeah, that's great. Yeah. Okay.